Hello and welcome back to some more Genshin Impact. So I'm going to be continuing the Recollector's Path with Part 3, A Pilgrimage Upon Blade's Edge. It says, Sarish's training continues. Could there be anything more glorious and enduring than a crystallized Satek Gwenet that has been frozen since the day of the disaster? And it wants me to talk to Zurian, or Zervan over here, I mean. So let's go ahead and do that. Hmm, looks like you successfully completed your training. Oh, we got it done, but, ah, uh, Suresh. After seeing that crystallized one, it, she said with real sincerity that even though it had existed for centuries, one day it would still disappear without a trace. And then immediately afterward, when we mentioned that her odes might be distorted as well, her mood changed instantly. Oh, but of course, my deeds, I mean, the deeds of us Pari, should be eternal. How can such a thing be compared to that which might be uh, might pardon to dust and ash? If something cannot be recorded properly, then there must be something wrong with the method. You wish to remind me of this fact, which is why you sent me to view the crystallized wenet. Am I right, er Elder Zervan? Ah, that's the way you see it. Interesting. Do you care nothing for the renown of the Pari? If you're speaking of re renown in the way humans understand it, not so much. Whatever you say, the present-day members of the Order of Skeptics are so very dull. Of course, if there are more interesting individuals like Aether or Paimon, then that would be a different case entirely. Hehe, <laughs> a compliment for Z from Zervan. Thanks, appreciate the praise, Elder. Hold, you can't call her Elder. Severish. There is no need to be stingy. Servon is the eldest here, so us calling her elder is reasonable, right? All right, enough idle chatter. If Surish still thinks so highly of this human notion of renown, then the training that comes next might just be right. Or be just right, rather. All right, I await your good news. So let's see. Tales of invited guests. The trespassers seem to have unique habits. They patrol around large quantities of supplies and often engage in activities surrounding specific objects such as cooking pans and bonfires. This is an opportunity to observe their behavioral patterns. Using the environment to solve problems is part of a bloom guard's training. So this is the same as the previous one where I can't use more than 20 of those nor claim everything. So let's proceed to the trial, wherever it might be, all the way over here. So hopefully that isn't too hard to get to from here. Oh, it's up above. Okay, I've got to teleport here and run over there. And begin the trial. So is it going to be the same, more or less? I think so. The Electro Crystal is new, I think. But, oh, and the Torrent Amber. Uh, this Hydro Amber is, has a mundane appearance. That said, it is said to be able to call down heavy rainstorms. Perhaps that is the only only true because the small size of the party. After this curia is struck by a uh, Naroda fruit, the region will suffer rainfall that will inflict the wet AoE status effect. Uh, the electric crystal says a commonly encountered electric crystal that is brimming with electricity it will lash out with its volts of, uh, at the creatures and items nearby. So after it's struck, it will send nearby foes flying and fleeing. Okay, nice. And it also has elemental reactions with other curios. That's important to keep in mind. Otherwise, it's mostly the same. So let's begin. Okay. So first things first. Let's uh, wait for them to line up and then hit them, right? Actually, uh, oh, I can do that. And then this. Kind of hit that. Oh. I thought that, uh, I thought for sure that would destroy that. Oh well, doesn't matter. Get that. I mean, maybe I'm crazy, but isn't this supposed to destroy the vines? It's not destroying it. Weird. Okay, that's not destroying the vines. Oh! I'm dumb. I, uh, have to destroy the vines myself. 
that explains some things. Uh, that said, I do wonder whether or not... Hmm. I feel like I'm wasting Naruto fruits here. Okay, you're gonna run out there, which will cause you to get yeah, hit by that. What will this do for me? Nothing? Okay. That'll hit that guy. This is definitely a little bit more complicated than the previous one. Um, I think I know what I'm supposed to do here. I hit that, that'll wake up those two, which will cause them to run over there. Then I can do this. Hit those four. Now the question is, is how do I get this guy? Uh, a very important question indeed. Maybe I can use the, uh, that one ability uh, to analyze. Is there anything in this area that I missed? Uh, it doesn't seem like there's anything particularly obvious. Oh wait, that might be it. Yeah, it gets in the path of uh, this over here for just a brief second. Uh, so hopefully, no, it's gonna dodge, isn't it? Oh good, it did. What else is there? Are these... Oh, I guess that was everything. Weird. I use less than 20, which is the most important thing. Collect and collect. There we go. Thorny Trek. The interwoven thorns conceal memories of the past. Undeniably, ten Undeniable tenacity is sometimes buried in such unfortunate experiences. So let's proceed to the trial all the way over here. So I can get to that from here. Asipatravana Swamp is the perennial target of corruption forces and is blanketed by a dangerous purple mist. Suresh can use her powers to awaken the power of Kavarena that flows within the thorny branches. After using this power to disperse the purple mist, the manifestation of defilement within will make itself known. The defile Defiled entities that lie concealed within the bog are the source of the purple mist. Only by destroying them can the mist be parted. Normal attacks do not work against them, and only the power of the Nerota fruits can completely purify them. Interesting. Uh, yeah, I'm not doing that at the moment, but nice to know. Find the correct location to restore the reminiscence. Okay, so where is it this time? Uh, oh. Right over here. It was a lot easier to find than the previous, uh, so I just need to match up this somehow uh, with the other. Where exactly? Is this it? No. Oh, it's right here. Good. Hey, isn't this the place we passed by looking for Mahir? Though Mahir shouldn't be here right now, right? All those thorns. They should be Mahir's companions. They look pretty good. Speaking of which, they helped us a lot. Really. Pale Floater, did you forget all that I have accomplished? No way. You might complain a lot, but you do care about your people, right? I... Uh, what did you do, Sarish? I can't seem to recall. Or, Sarish is the hero of this story. Yeah, it's like that. He indeed... He he... Ha ha, time I knew it. You've got a big big bark to go with your, so with your soft heart. Malicious slander. I was only here because I wished to earn the chaplet. If the elder hadn't made me come... Huh. Well, whatever you say. Mahir's part, uh, part of the reason you even managed to claim the twin horn chaplet. Shouldn't you thank her for that, at least? Her? Bah. For such a figure, one stained and still struggling thusly, I'd say she would only be worth any merit after another ten cleansing pilgrimages. Well, this ought to be interesting when we actually meet her during the quest. Ten is way too many. Uh, wait a moment. On second thought, Paimon thinks it wouldn't be too hard. 
The path really isn't that long. Though the way isn't long, running it repeatedly does make me tired. Huh? I expected an adventurer to be used to such a life by now. From the name, Paimon thought we would be walking for ten days and nights. As it turns out, we didn't even need to go that far. Hmm, the shortness of this tra uh, trail is making Paimon suspicious. If it was as long as the ocean its pilgrimage, then perhaps I would respect her. As it stands now, I can only state that the distance of the cleansing pilgrimage suits me here. Is it her? I don't know. Anyways. Oceanids pilgrimage. After the catastrophe, a great number of Oceanids came from Fontaine to Samaria, with the path they walked becoming their so-called holy path. Strange. Why would the Oceanids need to come to Samaria? Pilgrimage. Hmm. A pilgrimage for what? Hmm. I only heard of such a thing from my elder. Though there have been Oceanids from Fontaine, I haven't truly really looked into it. Could it be for the tree? Right. Surish said that the tree was the god that let the Pari be born. If honor's a big deal here, then the thing must uh, then the thing most deserving of it is definitely the tree. But what's the potential relationship between the Oceanids and the tree? Don't tell Paimon the Oceanids and the Pari are, like, distantly related. Hmm. Looking at you carefully, Paimon's really beginning to see the resemblance. Haha, -ha, Paimon hasn't discovered any world-shaking secrets, has she? They're not that similar. The slander flows from your lips again, pale, pale floater. I know nothing of any Oceanid. Hmm. You're probably right. Surish did say that the distance uh, Oceanids need to travel for their pilgrimage is far longer than Mahir's cleansing. But if that's true, does that mean the Oceanids are far stronger than the Pari? Is Surish admitting defeat? Hehe. <laughs> what? I didn't need. I didn't mean that. In all seriousness, the cleansing pilgrimage is not actually tied to the distance or to distance. It is more of a symbolic affair. Showcasing a rise and return to form. Hmm, that sounds impressive, but... Regardless, it is irrational to brush all of Pari as lesser than the Oceanids. And not because of any bias I may or may not have regarding Mahir. Speaking of which, why did Zervon say that the next part of the training was just right for Surish? It doesn't look like anything special here. Also, Mahir is missing too. Though, if she was here, Surish probably wouldn't talk to her properly either. They are pretty different in a lot of ways. Uh, one is round and the other is prickly, or Mahir doesn't need a yasna potty. Yeah, she also said that being forgotten is a good thing. That fool. If her existence and her efforts over these centuries are forgotten, then what was it all for? Maybe that's a question that Servon wants Surish to think about? Hmm. It seems that Surish still needs some time. Okay. And claim the prize. So the next part is called Silenced Percussion. After speaking of Mahir and the Oceanids, Surish seems to be at a loss. Servon's training has now progressed beyond its midpoint. So let's go over, yeah, and talk to Zervon again. Boats on me. Without knowing, the training has progressed to its latter half. How are things going? You can say we're hitting our stride, or there's still some room for improvement. Eh. Though when Sarish tells us stories, there really seems to be some self-reflection happening. Dialogue is a good way for Sarish to learn, especially as the people she's talking to are more interesting than those of the Order of Skeptics. Elder, you are being arbitrary. Aether is a remarkable, a remarkable Yasnapati, but not all of the Order of Skeptics members are. Uh, perhaps they do have a momentary instance of virtue between sessions of flattery and deception. Ah. I see you still need convincing. We will let our witnesses, Aether and Paimon, give a review regarding your performance. Of course, that is after you finish your recounting. Okay, on to the next part. 
Swift maneuver. Turbulence and gale force winds are constantly intertwined in the atmosphere. A bird would fend off the disturbance with its strong wings, while a pari can stabilize her flight and even brave the elements to speed up further. So let's proceed to the trial. Uh, it's not too far away from here, so I'll teleport here and get over there. And let's begin the trial. So we've got another one of these where you have to uh, dash through and collect the uh, flowers as you go along and dodge the uh, fruits. I wonder if I'm going to have to use the uh, ascend and descend options. So far, no, but I wouldn't be surprised if they start throwing those in. You know, this is both interesting and not so interesting at the same time. It's a little bit weird. It's not like it's bad, per se. It's just... Uh, oh, no. Can I go up? Yes, I can. Okay, good. Let's go down slightly. I did have to ascend, after all. And then descend. I think that's enough points. I didn't actually pay attention. Okay, yeah, it was. Nice. Okay, on to this one. Constant Guardian. Time will shatter the conjoined who are linked by brittle chains. This simple and easily understood truth will also engender new revelations in this most ordinary place. So, go over there. Uh, I'm going to have to climb up. Or, oh, I'll teleport back up here and then somehow get up there. Okay, it's all the way over there. And I'm, I was looking at the map, and it looks like this might actually be the fastest way is going all the way over here first uh, and then making my way over there. So let's do that. Let's activate this teleportation point. And you know what? There's a Dendroculus right underneath this bridge here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that very fast just because I can, and then I'll teleport back up to the teleportation point. I see another t Dendroculus right in this tree. I'll grab that too. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna activate this teleporter over here first before I interact with that over there. There we go, activated. Now we can do this. That tree, Roshno is there, but... Uh, let's, let us draw nearer. I fear something. I don't know what she said, but I'll have to do that later. And let's begin this trial. Okay, where is it? It's not going to tell me how far I am from it yet. Oh, I have seven seconds until the location hint. We're about to leave the trial area. So I was quite far away. Somewhere over this way. Somewhere. Oh. There we are. These are a little bit difficult to find sometimes. Okay. Match it up with that. Awesome. It's so quiet. No one's here. Even if Roshnu was here, it should still be quite quiet. Yeah, but if she was here, we would need to talk softer. A softer. She always has that sleepy look on her face. And she didn't seem too happy when we woke her using the Cory drums. Paimon heard that the quieter someone is, the worse it gets when they get angry. Who knows when Roshnu, what Roshnu is like when she's enraged. Then should that be true, my Yasnapati is the one who should fear the most, yes? The, we, the one we should fear the most, yes. Oh? Uh, Paimon knows him best. Though Aether isn't one for talking, he is still super nice, right? I'm about to get mad for real, rah! See? Not scary at all. Very well. Let us refocus. As you behold, this tree is called Barsum, and Rashnu is its, is its familiar, though she is absent right now. And? And? And nothing. There's nothing more to say of Rashnu and the Barsum. Feels like you are hiding something. Right. About the Cory drums. Uh, hiding? Absurd. As for the Cory drums, haven't you already seen them in use? No, but I'm sure that'll happen during the actual quest. 
Speaking of which, Paimon remembers Roshni as saying that she isn't the one who threw the Cory drums elsewhere. That really surprised Nas Nase Juna. If Paimon recalls, you were really nervous then, and didn't respond to Nase Juna's questioning. The way it looks now, the Order of Skeptics archives were really off the mark. Though playing the drums did wake Roshni. Paimon seems to understand why Zervon doesn't doesn't trust the current order of skeptics. Thanks, Sirish. Did they really help? The clue they gave are uh, the clues they gave are half truths at best. Um The current generation of the Order of Skeptics indeed does have some lacking members, but like a tree, no matter how many leaves flourish, there will always be some that will shrivel and dry. Once these dry leaves break and scatter, those that will remain, hmm. they will be the ones that can be relied upon. Hmm, yes. How did the Order of Skeptics become like this? I also want to know that. It is because I have been with the Order of Skeptics too long that I grew unable to discern their gradual changes. Only when I began to speak with you and the other outsiders, and other outsiders, did I realize the Order of Skeptics had changed. It has been a few hundred years. Besides their name being the same, they must have cycled through a few generations of different members already. Will the fame I seek, the fame I wish for the Yasnapati to eulogize for me, also erode into this, with everything changed, carrying only a hollow title for others to recall? Is that what my elder wishes that I learn? Hmm, no, it shouldn't be, but... Sivrish, uh, there's no need to be down. Maybe, uh, maybe Zervan didn't mean that. Seeing Sivrish so depressed makes Paimon realize, uh, feel like she did something wrong. Maybe we should have Zervan cheer up. Okay then. And claim. So, let's go ahead and continue with that which lingers. Surish finally realized that, at some point, she began to walk the path of meaninglessness and absurdity. The training is approaching its conclusion. So let's go ahead and talk to Zervan. Oh, Surish, you appear weary. Did you find an obstacle to your progress? Should we call it an obstacle or a sense of confusion? You recount what was said during your talk to Surish to Zervan. I see. However, the records of humans deviating from actual reality isn't anything new. They are a forget forgetful and prejudiced people, after all. Considering how vast and complex the affairs of the world generally are, observers might be able to get an overview of the major details, but not be able to grasp the minutia. Those present during said affairs might be direct witnesses, but still find themselves unable to move beyond their personal subjectivity. Oh. This doesn't feel very comforting. Oh, so you wish for me to provide some warm words to placate Surish? Did you forget that this is part of her training? To be able to overcome problems by oneself. That's the point of training, right? Paimon guesses that makes sense. If Surish cannot meet this task success successfully, then all that can be said is she is unworthy of the title of Bloomguard, and will not be able to bear the weight of the Twin Horde Chaplet. And when that time comes, or when the time comes, gentle though I am right now, I can only do what I'm, what must be done, no matter how cruel. W will you take my Chaplet from me? As for the punishment for failure, I suppose you will discover that yourself, should you truly fail. Hmm. If Sarush doesn't want to be bald, she better try extra hard now, oh my goodness. So the next part is Pursuit of Unceasing, unceasing Serenity. As easy as driving away the brutish interloper, interlopers may seem, it is in fact a triple test for a bloom guard's skills in observation, analysis, and action. As the wearer of the twin-horned chaplet, Sarush still needs to grow some more before she becomes a mature bloom guard. After all, the true duties of the Bloom Guard may not only include uh, not only include 
repelling intruders, but also in maintaining the serenity of the region. A grief. No more than 25 Naroda fruits can be thrown this time. Mm. So that's an increase, not a decrease, which is actually very nice. Uh, I've got to make my way all the way over here. So I'll teleport here and then run over there. Actually, before I interact with that right there, I'm going to go activate this teleporter. There we go. And now we can begin this trial. Uh, Rusted Cauldron, I need to look at, at what that does. Cauldron lined with nicks and dents. It is also the key to helping fill uninvited guest stomachs. After this, Kyrio is struck with the Naroda fruit. It will start burning and attract nearby opponents. So it works the same way as the bonfire. Okay. And the rest of these seem to be the same. So I need to destroy 20 boxes and barrels. Uh, let's go ahead and go ahead and destroy this. And then this as well. And I can light this up to kind of attract them. And then I've got to time this so that way I can hit both of them. So hopefully that'll work. Oh, I hit all four of them. Good. Okay. Now that I've done that, uh, the key here is waiting for these guys to get close to this, I think. I could be wrong. Yeah, I think that worked. It, I could have probably gotten rid of them with this, too. But, we'll see. Well, actually, we won't see because they're already gone. Okay. Now I've got to chase those guys away to wherever they're supposed to go. And then try to see... Wait. Maybe if I do this, I'll chase that guy away over there. And now I've got this. Just gotta wait for the right moment. And hopefully I get all of them. It didn't. It's fine though. Okay, good. Now I can destroy all those barrels. And are there any more enemies? I don't think there are. Uh, I don't know what doing that will do. Where's the bar boxes and barrels? Oh, over here. So there's some of them. Okay, good. Awesome! That was pretty easy. Collect and collect. Now on to this one. Enduring ambition. When one's state of mind evolves, one can experience the unique flashes of insight and epiph epiphanies from commonplace sights and from evocative past memories. Let's go over there. So it's not too far away from this uh, Statue of the Seven. And begin the trial. Okay, so where do I need to go? I bet it's over here somewhere. That's my guess. Yeah, it was. Uh, so I gotta float down. Then do this. Uh, right there. It has been long been a familiar sight to me, but now I feel only conflicted thinking about it. Huh? On the bright side, this maybe means that Sarush has matured? I know not if this is growth or a decline instead. Cheer up, Sarush. It's not like you to get so down. Right, since we're already here, why don't you tell us about the early history of the Order of Skeptics? Although there are, the things are the way they are now, there must have been a point to their establishment, right? Otherwise, Servan wouldn't have helped them, and you wouldn't have been drawn to them. Very well, if you wish to listen, I will speak. However, you must know that my birth came after the Order of Skeptics was formed. What happened prior is but hearsay to me as well. It was said that, before all that transpired, there were some of absolute purity and virtue who attempted to spread the word that catastrophe was imminent. But carrying a message does not halt the coming of ruin. 
Soon darkness washed over the lands as rolling tides, drowning all that lived in fear. Just as we saw the Sitek uh, win it, even the strongest creatures were crystallized, perishing during the event. Comparatively, with how soft and weak humans are, the resulting scouring cannot be considered a personal failing. But some individuals arrived, rushing into the maelstrom that was the, cal the Calamity. Were these people the first order of skeptics? Indeed, their leader was Nagarjuna. He, he once was a researcher who worked in the depths of the woods, but he put roots down here to help alleviate the aftershocks of the catastrophe. He, yes, and there was another one with golden hair. Though my elder spoke little of him, he should count as an interesting individual, I think. Him. I was about, for a second there, I was about to say it was uh, going to be Aether's sister, but maybe it was uh, Damesleaf? Ah, it's a real shame that he only lived a few hundred years ago. If he was still here, Paimon would love to, meet, to see him meet Aether. Then we can see who's more interesting. Why are we competing? Hmm. Following this, after my birth, the after effects of the catastrophe stabilized. So Surush had nothing to do then? Huh. Not entirely, as the filth will never be fully eradicated. It's just that noble sacrifices like the one made by the divine bird, Zemurg, were no longer needed. What's more, such duties have already been performed by Mahir, Rashnu, and other par uh, Pari predating me. After Nagarjuna uh, and the Elder slowly broke off contact with the Order of Skeptics. However, the Skeptics themselves remained ever interested in us Pari. But I suppose this is nothing strange to them. After all, we Pari are heroes worthy of songs and odes. The strong feelings of admiration we inspire are more than deserved. You sure about that? During that time, I often heard them loudly singing their poems and odes, and with the passing of time, the scenes of the Divine Bird's sacrifice grew ever more vivid. Yet, my elder treats this as if it's a paltry thing. It sounds like... Sarush got buttered up by honeyed words. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. What? No, impossible. I clearly wanted to imitate the Divine Bird because I was moved by its passion and will. The only reason why I associated with the Order of Skeptics was because they, they would tell me about ha the happenings of years past. Uh, of course it wasn't like they didn't heap an appropriate amount of praise on me. It's the same story, but told in an exaggerated way to get people's attention. Even Paimon likes listening to exciting stories. Oh, but if their intention was to record actual history, then they definitely did something wrong. Indeed, regardless if it is... I or the humans of the Order of Skeptics, those, whose condition, those who condition themselves to accept hyperbole are as ordinary will see themselves become like this. The Order of Skeptics archives were no longer simple truthful records. Instead, they were filled with all manner of embellishments and subjective opinions. And unknowingly, I began to put renown beyond action itself. Looks like you finally get it. She was, seems more energetic than she was when she came here. Isn't this a good thing? Hee <laughs> hee, now Zervon won't be asking to take the chaplet, will she? Your training is almost at its end. You'll definitely win Zervon's approval. <laughs> and claim. So that part's done. Cacophony of the Tuniki Catastrophe. The training is approaching its conclusion. Zervon's approval is but a step away. You look much happier than when, when we last spoke. Seems things have gone well. Hmm. From what I've learned during these tasks, I have grown. For now. You are worthy of being called Bloomguard? No, not yet. There's still a final portion of the task that I need to, compl to complete left. Until all the tasks are done, until your respect is earned, I am not finished. Only then can the twin horn chaplet truly belong to me. Oh, looks like you're finally- uh, you're actually beyond your rebellious phase after all, just as was claimed. 
Uh, Elder, you still remember that? Forget, I beg of you. Haha, <laughs> regardless. It's good to see your spirits have returned. Aether, Paimon, please be witnesses to the truth of whether Sarish is worthy of the Twin Horde Chaplet. Uh, then I will await you at the end. See you soon. Absolute agility, dexterity, and speed are both essential to flight. If one achieves mastery of both, one shall be able to go over all obstacles and obstructions in short order to handle each and every abnormality in the Orukasha Oasis with ease. So this one requires 3,000 points to claim everything, which is the same as the others have been. And hopefully I can get to it from here. Oh, there's a Dendroculus right there. I'll grab that before I uh, do this. That's funny. I think I uh, could have gotten that much earlier on. Okay, so now... Oh, I should speed up, shouldn't I? Uh, there we go. And I kind of paused there for a second because I was, like, not sure if I uh, could descend while I was dashing or not. You know, when you're, like, being blasted forward like that by the, uh, the thing, you know, these little boosters, uh, you can't ascend or descend. At least I don't think you can, based on my attempts. Go through these. Thank you. I like the fact that that restores your stamina each time you, uh, Go through one of those boosters. Hmm. Okay, got it. And got that as well. Good. That should have been enough, right? Yeah, it was. And claim both of these prizes. So this is the last thing I have to do because it'll automatically go into this, I believe, uh, after I uh, do this. So, Abyssal Echoes. The importance of this instant is not merely the crystallization of old memories, but also the establishment of the essential characteristics that a Bloomguard of the Pari must possess. Recalling, comprehending, and internalizing this moment is a key aspect of this trial. So let's go ahead and proceed to it. All the way over here, huh? Oh, there's a Dendroculus right there. Near this thing. I'll grab it very fast. There we go. And let's begin this trial. So, I think... It'll probably... Okay, yeah. This is right over here. Let's, uh... Get that. Should be right about... There-ish? Yeah. The Tunigi Hollow. This was the epicenter of the disaster, though all seems calm. And it's not hard to think of how things were then. These crystals are huge, a lot bigger than even Winnet. And to think it's Sarish's responsibility to handle future problems here. Is this not the most essential duty of a, a bloom guard should, should uphold Blatt? In addition, so we should also expect this of herself. That's what they say, anyway. Do you not trust me? <laughs> I did not realize I was at the stage that even Pale Floater thinks so little of me. Whoa, Sarish's arrogance makes it its grand return. Not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> Why do... Both of you still harbor such doubt in me after our time together. My pride has never been born of blind arrogance. Hmm. You should be well aware of that I am fully that I fully understand my past mistakes. Before I placed reputation above action, but now, as I have learned, this is an act of purest neglect. Just as Simurg became the divine bird through her sacrifice, I will become the bloom guard by my deeds and hear my name rightfully sung in praise of my service. Additionally, I have completed all of the assignments you have given me, Elder. Now, even you must admit that I am one worthy of the title of Bloomguard, worthy of the Twindorm Chaplet. 
Uh, I indeed have no objection to the choice made by the co uh, cover uh, Hmm? What? Did she expect me to object? No, I merely did not expect you to agree so easily, Elder. I expected a few rough words, at least. Ah, I am not nearly so vicious. About the responsibilities of a bloom guard, I did not actually gain any knowledge from the chaplet. Is this because I still do not embody the traits of a bloom guard fully? Do I still lack training? For this, the title of bloom guard might be inherited, but the duties are always variable. I see. To state it simply, there are no fixed rules, and even more, there are no specific judging standards. Usually the Kavarena's choice is final. Huh? So you're saying... I will not be taking the Twin Horn Chaplet from you. Now you don't need to worry about the top of your head getting cold. Uh... Missing the point. I understand. This must be part of the test. Seems like Sarish is having an epiphany. You are a forgetful one, pale floater. I just said it to pass these tests. Besides confidence and observation, the most important thing is understanding my past mistakes. Even if the outcome was already determined, would it not be retre retreading the path of folly if I cast aside all that I've learned during training? So, I think this must be the last test my elder has left, has left me. To a worthy bloom guard, this is but a simple task. This is a sign of your complete trust in me, Elder. I didn't expect you to see right through me. The Caverna uh, chose well. But your changes. I suppose Aether and Paimon bear some credit for that. Indeed, my Yasna Potty and the Pale Floater are both beings of merit. Though I wish to say that I am potent enough alone. I believe that with their aid, the extinguishing of the sign of Apasha will be no difficult task. How very reliable. Don't forget, Mahir and Rashnu will also be able to assist you. Are you not, Elder? Leave everything to me. Paimon thinks that Servon might have planned this, but seeing Surish is happy, Paimon can't really complain. So is that the end of the entire timed event? Let's claim this. Awesome. So I'm not seeing anything else here. Uh, let's look at my quest list That's very fast. Much. Okay, I'm not seeing anything in my quest list. Let's go talk to. Uh, let's go talk to Servon again, just in case. I leave it to you to help Surish out. Okay, that's all. Okay. Right. Anyways, uh, let's go ahead and claim this. Um. Yeah, I'm guessing that means that I'm done with this timed event. Awesome. So this is actually where I'm going to be stopping. Uh, that said, the next time I play, I'm not sure exactly what I'll be doing. I might go ahead and uh, try to finish up these uh, quests here, you know, the ones for meeting Mahir and Roshnu. But if there's another timed event added before I, you know, move on, to those quests then I might be like switching between them you know like doing some of the timed event and doing some of this so who knows anyways thanks again see you next time and bye bye